Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for another episode of Antonio's Movie Reviews. Today we have Deception, a 2008 thriller starring Hugh Jackman, Ewan McGregor, and Michelle Williams. This movie is another guilty pleasure of mine that has a ton of twists and is shot very stylishly. It reminds me a lot of the movie Bad Influence starring Rob Lowe and James Spader. It's about a shy, timid accountant, Jonathan McQuarrie, played by Ewan McGregor, who is befriended by the articulate and charismatic Wyatt Bowes, a lawyer played by Hugh Jackman. The movie was critically panned mostly because of its in-your-face eroticism and predictability, but I honestly thought the movie was decent as a thriller. Right off the bat, we see McQuarrie as sort of a victim here. He's pretty much already in a situation where Bowes has dirt on him. We get a sense of Jonathan's ordered and symmetrical life here, and he lives in an apartment which has a leaky pipe also. I will say that the movie is pretty slow at the beginning, but it'll get a bit more exciting here very soon. Wait, could you point me towards uh, Wyatt Bose's office, please? Who? Well, get in and get out, huh? So what's next? Uh, Clancy funds on Friday and then Clute Nichols after that. You, uh, you don't get much, do you? The movie obviously has a very shallow script, but I feel Jackman and McGregor elevate the very dull scenes with their star power and style. After all, for a big time Manhattan lawyer, Jackman isn't really all that articulate as I said earlier. What's the wildest thing you've ever done? Uh, look, I, I've never been too, too adventuresome. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Jonathan. That is pretty lame. <laughs> uh, at the corner, please, the walled off story. Uh, I got after Jonathan sees Wyatt meet up with a beautiful woman, we see a classic case of bait and switch when Wyatt accidentally takes Jonathan's cell phone. It really seems like Wyatt meant to do that, if you ask me, but this little mishap ends up becoming a life changer for the timid Jonathan. Are you free tonight? One of the callers asks Jonathan. He reluctantly meets up with the woman. Sort of surprised he did this. Hello? Are you free tonight? <laughs> Actually, I am, but th this... This definitely seems like an impulsive decision on McCory's part. Me, honestly, I, I just can't picture him deciding to go out and particularly meet someone that he didn't know really after being as timid as he was, but it worked out in his favor, I see. A beautiful woman shows up and she seems to be looking for him. Shall we go? Yes. Beautiful. It's just you called me and I came here, but I don't... The woman was definitely aggressive, and she pretty much took control of the entire situation, which if not for that, that probably wouldn't have even happened for poor John, but looks like he knew what to do. He rose to the occasion, and he got into the swing of things for sure. Oh, all right. So, did I get any calls? <laughs> yes, you did. After talking to Wyatt, he realizes that the people that are calling are actually part of a sex club and then he realizes that he wants to, you know, pursue more women so he calls one himself. She ends up being Charlotte Rampling and a well-esteemed actress. He explains the very small set of rules to him and explains it's called the list. Take it elsewhere. No business talk and no names. Strike me something as a stowaway. If it wasn't for the $4,000 suit, I'd say you didn't belong here at all. No rough stuff and no names were the only rules she really explained. Intimacy without intricacy. Thank you. A montage follows that I really enjoyed of Jonathan's adventures. The beautiful women all look very overdone, but of course that adds to the elitism of what, what the list is supposed to represent. Intimacy without intricacy. The movie's title, Deception, is a bit far-reaching in my opinion because the movie tries to go so many different directions. The deceit isn't obvious in the movie for quite some time. In fact, their friendship, Hugh Jackman and Ewan McGregor, it really seemed genuine at the beginning. One of the phone calls leads Jonathan to meet S, who goes by that name because we never really learn what her real name is in this movie. Jonathan is surprised one evening to find that his latest encounter is the blonde woman from the subway. Instead of having sex, they just sit up and talk, and Jonathan obviously falls in love with the woman. It's really hard to see if she actually called naturally, or if this entire thing was a setup by Hugh Jackman, which you'll find out soon enough that one of the twists is about to occur in the movie. Can you meet me at 
in Chinatown at Doyer Street, say, 8 o'clock. I got you a present. After ignoring phone calls from all the other women of the list, he ends up only answering for S and the two spend hours together before getting a hotel room in Chinatown, which this part really wasn't all that predictable for me, honestly. I don't know what the critics meant. I'll be right back. I'll get the ice. Yeah, so of course, once Jonathan goes out to get that ice, when he returns back to the room, things are not what they once were before. He ends up getting knocked out by some unknown assailant, but when he wakes up, nothing is out of place in the room. So, of course, the detective is a bit weary of his story, which turns out to be another plot in the movie. It looks like he's being framed. It looks like our plot is starting to ramp up here. He goes back to the office to look for Wyatt, which he finds out that there is no Wyatt who works there. Wow, what do you know? That really... That was kind of a surprise, because he made his way into that office very well. That's what you call social engineering. We really learn about that in my job as well. You know, it's amazing how bad this movie did in the box office, seeing as how it had to have had something that lured these three stars, being Ewan McGregor, Hugh Jackman, and Michelle Williams, to the film in the first place. I mean, they definitely added a lot to the movie by just being in it, but they really didn't help the script much. It was very shallow and lacked a lot of depth. It just could have been done so much better, in my opinion. With this twist of Hugh Jackman not being who he seems, the movie is trying to live up to his name a bit. Tina, I'm in town. I want to see you again. Six months is way too long. Arrived? You can go on up. Thank you. Who are you? I do like how Jonathan was smart enough to realize that Tina must have known Wyatt personally and he went to her hotel room and found out who Wyatt actually was. This allows Jonathan to get a little bit of an advantage over Wyatt. Okay, so what's his real name? What? Yeah, because I know all about you. I know. Detective Russo, line four. Now, like I said on the phone, she fits the description you gave us of that missing woman of yours. It looks like Wyatt has started killing women from the list in order to frame Jonathan. Hybrid weave, it's uh, natural gut and Kevlar. Kevlar? Kevlar. I must say, this wasn't a very easy movie to review. It's just sort of slow at times and unbelievable during certain parts and just overall uninteresting but especially after you know everything hits the fan and the erotic scenes are done with it just really is a slow drawn out suspenseful situation that you kind of already know where it's going it turns out that Wyatt wants Jonathan to uh, rob 20 million dollars from one of the firms that he's auditing and deposit into an overseas account that's gonna be picked up by Wyatt of course it's sort of a cliche the entire you know file upload suspenseful thing unless or someone will die if you don't hurry up and get it done it's just you know it's, it's been done a lot of times this scene that we're coming up on is one of the parts that I mean are unbelievable to the film it's like Jonathan rushes home to his apartment because that's where S is supposed to be and someone I guess goes into the apartment they're blown away while we see Wyatt is watching from across the street but for whatever reason we're never led to believe that it was actually Jonathan who blows up in that apartment we see that Wyatt is attempting to change his identity, putting on glasses and changing his hairstyle. Looks like he's trying to look like Jonathan. He's already taken it away. Learn how to behave, right? Sure. Order and symmetry. What else could a man need? We still haven't seen Jonathan at this point. They're in Madrid, Spain now. The rules, no names, huh? It's a nice suit. Mm, when you get in? As we get to the end of this film, what I like most about it is basically Hugh Jackman and Ewan McGregor. They were just great actors overall in this film that had a shallow plot and a lot of predictability to it. I feel like they would have been good in, you know, a talented Mr. Ripley, not to downplay Matt Damon and Jude Law. They just would have done it really good in my opinion as well. Hugh Jackman is one of my favorite actors. Hello? Are you free tonight? 
night. My God, I'm a handsome devil. It looks like we see that Jonathan has actually survived that apartment explosion. You'd have thought this movie might have been over soon, but the twists just keep coming and coming. All yours. In another situation of predictability, you see that Wyatt has a gun with him. Of course, he wasn't going to let Jonathan just come there and just survive and take the money. Half of this movie was like <laughs> porn, but the other half is like, you know, predictable. I saw one review said that just made me laugh out loud seriously. But, you know, it's just like, you know, the effort was there. Definitely. To me, I wish the film would have like elaborated more on the list like had more there more substance there in terms of the entire you know club aspect of the list it tried to go into this neo-noir type thing and i feel like the movie just wasn't meant to be that at the beginning it's like they did a, a script rewrite the day before they finished the movie or something like that and then we see that the guy who was actually the maintenance man for the apartment of which Jonathan lived in was the, the body that was taken to the morgue after the fire. So we never really see how Macquarie escaped, which kind of ticked me off. But, you know, regardless, this was Deception 2008. I hope you enjoyed my review. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and tune in for the next episode. Thank you very much.